violence in Chicago seems to not be uh, diminished despite efforts from Governor J.B. Pritzker and Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson sending out so-called peacekeepers paid for with taxpayer dollars to try to uh, address violence. But the mayor yesterday uh, reaffirming his commitment to stopping violence we'll hear some of what he had to say over the weekend and yesterday. Welcome back. Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. Of course, Chicago uh, really is a beautiful city. Uh, It's got so much culture. It's got so much great food for you sports nuts out there. I mean, you can't go wrong with all the major league teams up there. Uh, Awesome concert venues. Everything from, you know, big arenas to uh, small venues. I know the Aragon Ballroom. Every concert I've gone to there has just been phenomenal be it Nine Inch Nails, be it Portis Head, be it, you know, uh, Ween. Uh, But it's been a while since at least I've been to Chicago. Uh, And, you know, I think a lot of people across the state who used to go to Chicago regularly kind of shy away from going to Chicago. Now, I would imagine some of you, uh, partly it's because of the stories of violence that you hear weekend after weekend after weekend. So uh, what did uh, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson have to say? Well, uh, my uh, colleague Andrew Hensel put this story together yesterday afternoon after the mayor uh, held a uh, uh, swearing-in ceremony for new Chicago police recruits. Uh, But this comes after another deadly weekend where at least 10 people were left dead, more than 30 others wounded, if not more. Uh, And over the past 28 days, Chicago has seen 244 shootings, including 73 over the last week. And that's according to Chicago police statistics, which if you pull that up, you can see uh, the, the stats for yourself uh, and is where we're at in the uh, the coverage of all the different crimes that there are committed. Because it's not just, uh, you know, shootings. Uh, you've got uh, criminal sexual assault, robbery, aggravated battery, burglary, theft, uh, motor vehicle theft. And uh, those numbers, uh, the only areas we're seeing a four year decline is in the uh, aggravated battery and burglary categories, but uh, it looks like uh, everything else seems to be on the rise, uh, at least when it comes to uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the the changes over several years. Uh, but uh, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson, uh, he was with the uh, uh, Chicago police recruits yesterday, but over the weekend uh, on what was deemed by gun control groups as National Gun Violence Awareness Weekend, where people were wearing orange, uh, Johnson, he, uh, he shared a message on social media about uh, how he's remaining committed uh, to addressing I'm expressing violence. expressing my dedication to promoting peace and achieving safety in Chicago. Gun violence has caused too much pain and trauma in our communities for far too long. As mayor, I am committed to using every resource at my disposal to protect life in our city. So, so that was a social media message that he shared. But then on Monday, he attended the Chicago Police Department recruits graduation ceremony and spoke about the importance of the officers earning the trust of their communities when it comes to enforcing Chicago and state laws. Your ability to make bonds with communities that have been disinvested in over the course of decades is critical to your service. All residents want to trust in the ability of law enforcement. He continued to talk about how they need to work at keeping the city safe. Chicagoans want to trust the police department. They have confidence, they have love, and they want your help. When you arrive, when you show up on some of the most difficult days, the most vulnerable moments, you'll be there. But listen, it wasn't just, uh, you know, uh, the the issue of, uh, you know, getting more police on the streets and uh, building that trust. There's also the need for resources. And if you recall last week, you had the city of Chicago approve fifty one million dollars to give for migrant housing from the migrants that are being transported from the U.S. southern border to places like Chicago. And this fifty one million dollars is only expected to last a couple of months. Uh, So they're going to have to come back and probably reappropriate more and that's on top of the 40 plus million dollars that the state of Illinois is going to send Chicago for this issue but some of the black community in Chicago not happy about those resources going to migrants when they need resources uh, at home here is Chicago Alderman uh, David Moore from last week in the city council chambers in an emergency 
make sure you put your mask on first before you help someone else. Because if you die, you can't be a blessing to no one else. So uh, we'll be watching what happens in Chicago uh, when it comes to violence, when it comes to crime, and how uh, the the, the the city and the state's going to get a handle on it. And I know that uh, you know various other activists, Tio Hardeman being one, uh, talking about how they have to uh, let the police do their job and actually go after criminals. You even have Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart saying part of the Safety Act that allows for two-day furloughs to those who are under home arrest, criminal defendants, he says that's not working because they had to rearrest more than 120 individuals on home confinements that were violating the law while they were out on personal furlough for two days. That was a measure that was enacted with part of the uh, the Safety Act. Uh, so a lot of questions, a lot of uh, proposed solutions, but when it comes to the uh, overall the, the, the criminal justice reforms we've seen, are we actually going to see some of those possibly reversed? Uh, we'll watch that closely. Uh, it is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on WMA.